Ever since the Wright brothers proved that it was possible for heavier-than-air machines to fly, engineers have been trying to develop designs that make flight easier and more efficient for everyone. There's a range of different techniques that can be used to generate the lift required to fly. And today, we're going to push the boundaries of what you thought was possible as we take a look at 15 of the most unusual flying vehicles. Number 15. Avro Car If there was ever an experimental aircraft that could easily be mistaken for a UFO, then the Avro Car is surely it. Developed in the 1950s by Avro Canada, a secret project for the U.S. military, it was originally envisioned as being a fighter aircraft capable of achieving high speeds and altitudes. But after funding was scaled back, it began being seen as a high-performance helicopter before the project was finally scrapped in 1961. Rather than using the principle of generating lift through the use of wings, the Avro car relied on what's known as the Coanda effect, which meant that in theory the circular craft would be able to fly by blowing exhaust across its rim from a single 124 blade turbo rotor. Looking sort of like a frisbee, the test vehicle was 18 feet in diameter and 3.5 feet thick and had a theoretical top speed of 300 miles per hour, with a service ceiling of 10,000 feet. Amazingly, the prototype did actually manage to take off and fly, although it never achieved the specs that were promised. The fastest speed it was able to achieve in practice was 35 miles per hour, at a height of just 3 feet, or just under a meter. The thrust and stability issues proved to be too complicated to overcome, which is what led to the termination of the project. But this doesn't mean that the concept itself was flawed. There are many who believe that if significant funding were acquired today, modern technology and computer systems could enable a design like the Avro car to reach its full potential. Number 14. NASA M2 F1 The odd-looking M2 F1 was an experimental aircraft designed by NASA to test a concept whereby aircraft would be able to fly without needing wings and instead leverage a design that would rely on the body of the craft itself to generate lift. Nicknamed the Flying Bathtub because of its peculiar dimensions, the prototype, which was made from a tubular steel frame with a plywood shell, was completed in 1963. Measuring 20 feet long and with a wingspan of just 14 feet, the M2F1 conducted more than 400 flight tests, although not a single one of these saw it take off on its own. Instead, it was towed by a C-47 aircraft to allow measurements to be taken, and for the pilots to safely test its responsiveness and in-flight capabilities. It was concluded that a design like this was well suited for horizontal landings of atmospheric vehicles. Even though the M2F1 project was terminated in 1966, data that was collected from the flights and certain design elements were eventually incorporated into the design of the space shuttle. Number 13. Omni Hoverboard Various companies around the world are developing new concepts for the future of personal flight, whether they be for practical uses or recreational ones. And possibly the most exciting and unusual of them all is the idea of a hoverboard. Omni Hoverboards is a company based in Montreal, Canada, and is leading the way in the technology with the company's CEO having set several world records in the process. The design is surprisingly simple and is in many ways like a larger version of the consumer drones that have been available for several years. There's a main platform that the rider is strapped into via their boots, and underneath it there are eight rotors. It's controlled by a handheld throttle with the rider's body responsible for balance and direction, and is fully electric powered with a series of inbuilt lithium ion batteries. These, of course, significantly increase the weight, which reduces the overall airtime, but do have the advantage of adding further stability while in the air. The one thing the device is currently lacking is any type of automatic stabilizer, gyros, or accelerometers. But with the company planning on releasing a consumer version soon, it'll only be a matter of time until they develop a version that's more easily accessible to amateur enthusiasts. Number 12. Zeva Aero The idea of a circular aircraft may be counterintuitive to begin with, but the Zeva Aero takes that to a whole new level. Instead of being designed to operate solely in a horizontal formation, it can fly vertically too, and that's why it's been seen as a potentially revolutionary vehicle. Created by Zeva, a company based in Tacoma, Washington, it's described as being a personal flying machine that's able to reach speeds in flight of up to 160 miles per hour. It's a vertical takeoff craft, and this is why the company has given it such an unusual shape. When sat vertically, the pilot can simply open the door and stand inside before using the four rotors to lift up into the air. 
then the profile of the craft changes a bit to a horizontal formation, which results in the pilot adopting a Superman-style pose inside, and the rotors adjust themselves to provide forward thrust. The overall footprint of the craft has been designed to ensure it can fit within a standard automobile parking space, and amazingly, the company has already performed several successful test flights. They're now taking pre-orders for the Aero with deposits of five grand, but with the final price expected to be around $250,000, it won't be for everyone. Number 11, Eurocopter X Cubed. Helicopters usually use one or two main rotors to generate their lift and propulsion, but this isn't necessarily the most efficient way to fly. There have been several attempts to create more effective, faster, and nimble designs, and the most successful was the Eurocopter X Cubed. Designed by Airbus Helicopters in the early 2000s, it was created to be a high-speed, long-range hybrid helicopter, and was based on the AS-365 Dolphin design. Engineers, however, shortened the wings and fitted a tractor propeller on each one, which have different pitches in order to counteract the torque of the main rotor something that's enabled them to forego the tail rotor altogether. This essentially gave the chopper a benefit of a main rotor for lift and the propellers for thrust, like in a plane, and allowed for aerodynamic improvements. The main rotor, for example, could turn 15% slower than in normal helicopters because it was only used for lift, and this reduced the drag caused by the advancing blade tips. These savings, as well as powerful engines, means that the X-Cubed was able to achieve a top speed of 293 miles per hour while in testing, which remains an unofficial helicopter speed record. Despite the company deciding there was no market for the X-Cubed, they still haven't given up on the overall concept. The original prototype is now in a museum, but the technology they developed for it is now being repurposed into a revolutionary design called the Airbus Racer and this is expected to enter testing soon, with the hopes that it'll offer a high-speed, low-emission vehicle for short-range flights. Number 10, Leduc 022. Built in the mid-1950s, the Leduc 022 was a French interceptor prototype aircraft that had been in development since before the Second World War. It was made to fulfill a very specific need, the ability to intercept and destroy any aerial threat while being able to take off from a 3,000-foot grass runway. And to do this, it was designed with a ramjet engine for performance in the air, and a supplementary turbojet engine that allowed it to take off on its own and reach the required altitude and speed before the main engine kicked in. Measuring just under 60 feet long and with a wingspan of 32 feet, it had a maximum speed of 750 miles per hour and could carry up to 40 rockets. Featuring 30-degree swept wings and a tricycle landing gear, the O22 had a monocoque fuselage, a plexiglass cockpit, and the entire forward section of the nose cone acted as an escape capsule for the pilot. At first, testing appeared to be going well and the craft performed 141 test flights, but unexpected performance issues resulting from its unusual configuration meant that the project was ultimately scrapped in 1958. Number 9. Hiller X-18 the bizarre-looking Hiller X-18 was an experimental transportation aircraft that was designed and developed in the 1950s, and was one of the first to explore tilt-wing and vertical liftoff and landing technology. Created by the Hiller Aircraft Corporation with funding from the U.S. Air Force, only one prototype was ever built. And to cut costs, it was constructed mainly from salvaged parts from other aircraft, such as the fuselage of a Chase YC-122C Avatruck and the turboprops from a Lockheed XFV-1. Measuring 63 feet long and with a wingspan of 48 feet, the contra-rotating propellers had an enormous 16-foot diameter. Cleverly, the exhaust of the engine was diverted upwards and downwards at the tail to provide pitch control at lower speeds. And to begin with, the company thought the design, which they called the Propello Plane, was a major success. Issues encountered during testing, however, meant that the X-18 would only perform 20 test flights, and the program was canceled in 1964. It wasn't a complete failure, though, and developments made for the aircraft, such as cross-shafting between the engines and direct propeller pitch control, became important techniques for the vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that would be designed in the following decades. Number 8. Open Sky M02J Aircraft designers often look to other sources of inspiration for the overall shape and efficiency of new prototypes. And while it's usually nature that they turn to, the developers of the Open Sky M02J had different ideas. 
Aircraft Olympos, a Japanese company, instead based their new design on the Mo aircraft, which featured in the Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind anime, and the result was something very unusual. It's a tailless concept that's intended to take off and climb for up to 10 minutes under its own power, but then become an unpowered glider. Designed to be flown by one person, the fuselage is just under 9 feet long and has a wingspan of 31 feet. Development of the M02J began in the early 2000s, with the first version successfully flying in 2006, but it took a further 10 years before a jet engine version was ready to be displayed. For now, though, it remains little more of a proof-of-concept idea, but the company still hopes it may gain interest in the future from enthusiasts. Number 7. Mil V-12 Created by the Mill Design Bureau for the Soviet Union in the 1960s, the Mill V-12 was and remains the largest helicopter to have ever been built. The idea was that it would become a troop and supply transport with the ability to carry up to 25 tons of cargo, and this required a different approach to the design, which ended up looking more like a plane with helicopter rotors attached to it. By using a transverse rotor system, there was no need for a tail rotor, but the force being put through the wings meant that the additional support struts were needed. Requiring six crew members to operate, the V-12 was 121 feet long, with a wingspan of 219 feet. It had a top speed of 160 miles per hour. Its ability to carry up to 200 passengers was of particular interest to the Soviet military, who saw it as a potentially effective means of dropping large numbers of troops much closer to where they were needed than alternative options were capable of. But it was the overall cost that became prohibitive. After mixed test results, only two were ever built, and while they're still on display near to where they were constructed, development on the program was canceled in 1974. Number 6. Nemeth Parasol when you first see it, you may wonder whether the Nemeth parasol was even capable of flight, but it's proof that wings as we know them aren't the only feasible way to generate lift. Designed and built in 1934, it was a tail dragger that used a round wing design, and to build the prototype, the developers used a lengthened fuselage from a 1920s Alliance cargo plane and added two ailerons near the rear to help with low-speed landing. As it looks so strange, there was a lot of media coverage at the time of the parasol, which became known as the parachute plane, and one of the interesting features was that it was small enough to land in a large backyard and even be stored in a garage. It was also said to be extremely easy to fly and stall-proof, with the company claiming that someone without any pilot experience whatsoever would only take 30 minutes to learn the controls. If any issues did develop, the circular wing would indeed act as a parachute and allow the plane to safely return to the ground. Despite their best attempts to revolutionize the industry, the company behind the parasol was only able to build one functioning prototype, and the drag created by the wing meant it used far more fuel than competitive designs. Number 5. Curtis Wright VZ-7 Designed by the Curtis Wright Company for the U.S. Army in the mid-1950s, the VZ-7 was heralded as the future of military transport. But rather than revolutionizing warfare, it's gone down in history as one of the strangest flying vehicles ever imagined. At the time, the Army was encouraging companies to create concepts for a flying jeep, and the VZ-7 was, for a time, seen as the frontrunner. The vertical takeoff and landing vehicle had a central platform where the pilot and passenger would sit in tandem, and that could also be equipped with machine guns. And this had four ducted fan rotors mounted to it. The vehicle was 17 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 9 feet tall, and its French-built turboshaft engine meant it had a top speed of 32 miles per hour. The initial testing for the VZ-7 actually exceeded expectations and was looking to be a perfect floating platform that could be used as a scout or a transport. But the biggest challenge was its overall reliability. In 1960, the Army decided there was too great a risk of it failing and that its slow speed would have made it an easy target for the enemy. So it was decided that the entire program looking to develop a flying jeep would be terminated. Number 4. Snecma Coleopter C-450 Test pilots are known as being some of the bravest and craziest people in the world, but you can only imagine what it must have felt like to board the Snecma Coleopter C-450 with the intention of taking it up into the sky. With a name translating to mean Beetle, it was a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle designed by French company Snecma in the late 1950s, and was the newest iteration of an overall design that had been developed over the previous years. 
measuring 26 feet long and a wingspan of 14 feet. The fuselage was surrounded by an annular wing, and stability and control was provided by the addition of four triangular winglets. Of course, the main thing that's unusual about it is its lack of noticeable wings, and it almost looks as if it's the nose section of a larger aircraft or rocket, designed to accommodate one pilot who would be seated on a tilting ejector seat. The initial test of the design seemed to be promising, but on its ninth flight there was a catastrophic error and the only prototype was completely destroyed. With little financing and nowhere near enough data to prove its viability, they had no choice but to end the C-450 project. Number 3. M-15 Belfagor To begin with, the M-15 Belfagor may look very similar to any other biplane, but this model holds a unique place in history as being the only jet-powered biplane to have ever gone into production. It was created by a Polish company in the early 1970s as an agricultural aircraft, and from the offset, the designers faced issues. Jet engines aren't particularly suited to low-flying, low-speed aircraft, and it took a long time to work out the handling and maintenance issues that arose. Furthermore, it was extremely noisy, something that, in combination with its strange appearance, led to it being known as Belphegor, after the noisy demon in Christian mythology. Even after the testing phase, the M15 remained tricky to fly, expensive to run, and was in no way an improvement on other established designs. But despite this, the company was still able to produce and sell 175 of them, even though the original plan was to manufacture many thousands. It's now believed that not a single one of them remains in use, but they do still retain the record for being the slowest jet aircraft ever made, and the only jet-powered crop duster ever built. Number 2. NASA Helios with the need to produce designs that are able to work in wildly different environments that are present on our planet, NASA has for a long time been at the forefront of truly revolutionary aircraft technology. One of the most unusual in recent times is the Helios, which was part of a program in the late 1990s to develop solar and fuel cell powered unmanned aerial vehicles. It was essentially one long, flexible wing, measuring 247 feet, and was made from lightweight materials such as carbon fiber, graphite epoxy, Kevlar, and styrofoam. It was built in six sections, and where they were each connected, there was an underwing pod that carried landing gears, battery systems, flight computers, and instruments to monitor performance. The entire surface of the mono wing was covered with solar panels to provide the power needed in flight, and all flight control was provided by 72 trailing edge elevators that were affixed along the entire length of the wing and operated by servo motors connected to the flight computers. In testing, the Helios was able to achieve a number of objectives, particularly its ability to reach the highest altitude ever obtained by a winged aircraft, and was able to do so for extended periods of time. Helios was, however, completely destroyed during a test flight when unexpected vibrations began overwhelming the wing, and NASA decided they had learned enough from the concept to warrant building a new one. Number 1. Rutan Voyager Designed and built by the Rutan Aircraft Factory, the unusual-looking Rutan Voyager was a very different design to any aircraft that had come before it and this allowed it to set the record in 1986 for being the first plane to circumnavigate the globe without stopping or refueling. This is hugely impressive considering the original sketch for the design was drawn on the back of a napkin. Measuring 29 feet long and with a wingspan of 110 feet, it was powered by two Teledyne Continental four-cylinder engines and had a top speed of 122 miles per hour. Piloted by two people, the record attempt just took over nine days to complete, which is a surprisingly long time to remain airborne. Of course, the designers had to finally balance the trade-off between speed and efficiency to enable it to complete the journey, and the airframe, which was made of fiberglass and carbon fiber, only weighed 930 pounds before the engines were added. It had front and rear propellers, each of which were powered by a separate engine, and the wings were designed to be flexible to allow the plane to more easily glide through the changing weather conditions. Although this meant that damage was caused to the wingtips when taking off because they bent so far down towards the runway. Amazingly, despite obvious improvements in aircraft design since then, only one has been able to replicate the round-the-world flight that Voyager made, and it too was built by Rutan with a very similar design. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more Top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.